class. I am Professor Jonathan Dry, and I want to welcome you to Shakespeare 101, or as I like to call it, Shakespeare Unchained, or The Bard Unbound. In the weeks to come, we will be studying Shakespeare's plays and his life, and uh, his, interna his uh, international opinion and reputation. We will start with uh, talking about his life, the life of Shakespeare. We will attempt to take the full measure of this man, who was known as the Bard of Avon, the Sage of Stratford, the Lord of London, the Idol of England, the, the Balladeer of Britain, the... and so on and so forth. He went by many names, but did anyone really know who he was, this son of a Stratford glove maker? We will attempt to answer this question, and many more, as we study his plays, ransack his life, plunge into his social world, and plumb his mysteries. Shakespeare's development as a playwright was slow but steady. His first really mature work was Richard III. Richard was a most colorful character and one of my personal favorites. He was more lively than that old fart, Lear, more fun than that self-tormented boar, Othello, and much more a man of action than that overrated procrastinator, Hamlet. We don't mind Richard killing people because he seems to have so much fun doing it. And then, in that final scene on Bosworth Field, Shakespeare has given Richard one of his most immortal lines. <clears throat> To be or not to be, that is the winter of our discontent. Uh, no, I don't think that's it. Uh, I believe it has something to do with the horse. A horse! A horse! My kingdom for a horse! I have set my life upon a cast, and I will brave the hazard of the die. Six Richmonds there be in the field today. Five have I slain instead of him. A horse! A horse! My kingdom for a horse! Someone call me for a horse? Yes, I did. Be ye of the house of York or the house of Lancaster? Neither God. I'm Sam Smagley of Sam's ass of new and previously owned horses. You're a stableman. That's right, Gov. Now, about this here horse. Yes, I need a horse at once. Well, you're on your man. Great. Where's the horse? Well, you all in good time. Time? Does it look like I have a lot of time? I'm in the middle of a major battle here. Oh, I can see that. I mean, New Yorks and Lancashire are always fighting and killing one another, and we poor local support right in the middle. Frankly, we're fed up with your feuding, Gov. I am the king. Oh, king Edward? No, he's dead! King Richard. Oh, pardon me, sire. Uh, which one? Which what? Well, which Richard? Richard the third. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're the one with the, uh... With the what? Well, uh, uh you know. Sorry. Well, uh, never mind, sir. Cease your prattle. Now, where is this horse? Well, you get it, sire, uh, uh, after we take care of a few details. Damn the details. My entire kingdom hangs in the balance. Well, so does my business, sire. I've got the right to make a living, too, you know. All right, all right, all right. Just be brief. Right. No, this here horse, what you want. Were you looking to buy or to rent? What? Well, I can rent you a good strong horse for a week at a very good rate, sir. Now, the daily rate is a little bit cheaper, but... I will not... just buy the horse. Oh, a wise decision, your majesty. Great. So, where is it? Well, uh, hold on a minute, sir. There's the size and colour to discuss. I, do. I don't care about the colour. I just need a big, strong steed. Well, 
That's a bit of a general description, Your Majesty, but <laughs> I think I can, uh, I can fill the bill. Now, you mentioned groining tobacco. Now, for those of our customers what ride their steeds into battle, we highly suggest battle fueled insurance. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? Just, just in case that the horse should be injured or, God forbid, killed in combat, then, sire, you get back your full investment. Okay, look, I don't need any insurance. I just need a bloody horse! And I, I don't think that's a very wise decision. Your Grace, uh, uh, but I uh, know uh, what with the high mortality rate of horses in the battle these days. Uh, but you are the customer, sire. Uh, so there's just a little matter of payment. Yes, see the Lord of the Treasury tomorrow, and he will pay you in full. Well, it's a bit more complicated than that, sire. <laughs> Remember what you said. What did I say? Well, I, I, I got it written down here somewhere. Make it quick! No, just, no, oh, there, there, yeah. See, you said, a horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. <laughs> so, so I said that. Well, indeed you did, sire, and more than once I might add. See? Oh, and, and you thought that I meant that I would give you my entire kingdom for a horse. Well, Your Majesty, I took you at your word. Okay. Look here, good man. <laughs> when I said that, I was not speaking literally. I was speaking figuratively. You lost me there, sorry. <laughs> when I said my kingdom for a horse, I was speaking in hyperbole. Really? Yes. In I, I, I per what? Hi per bow. It's just a form of exaggeration. Look, it, it's like if I were to say to you, I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. I don't mean that I would actually eat a horse. I just mean that I'm extremely hungry. Oh, I don't know about that, sire. My cousin Ziggy ate a horse once, except everything is at the tail. Yeah, he did it for Betsy. He was drunk as a lord at the time. I will pay you 100 gold ducats for the horse. Uh, you said your kingdom. <laughs> Be you reasonable. I can't give you my entire kingdom. That is preposterous. About half. Half. Half my kingdom. <laughs> okay! Okay, all right, let's back. All right, I'll play along. Here's what I'll say. You bring me a horse. And I will give you a quarter of my kingdom. Oh, which quarter, sire? Uh, you, you can have Wales and Northumberland. Oh, I got family in Northumberland. <laughs> yeah, but they're on the wife's side. They're a bloody horrible lot. If they find I got a kingdom, they'll move into my castle before you can say Jack Robinson. And I'd never get rid of him, sire. But you'd be the king, so you wouldn't have to put up with that sort of thing. Sire, sire, you haven't met my mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> no, Northumberland's out. Very well. Wales and Dorset. Dorset. Well... The wife don't like to see her. She makes her come out in hives. Shropshire. Uh, too windy. Durham. T too cold. Cheshire. Too much cheddar. Too much cheddar! Yes, <laughs> the wife's allergic to cheese. No, no, no. She, one nibble and she blows up like a bloody balloon. It's an ugly sight, sire. Would you like one quarter of my kingdom or not? Well, don't get peevish, sire. You're saving the best bits for yourself. I'm the king! It's my bloody kingdom! All right, all right, sir. All right, all right. I, 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 I forget Wales and all that. And I'll have the hundred ducats. All right, all right. Now, you're talking some sense. Look. Right. Take this. Give it to the Lord of the Treasury. And you will get your money. Well, well that, that, that's, that's fine and good, sire. Uh, but I'd like the cash now, if you don't mind. Cash? Jim, come here. Do you think that I would wander into mortal combat with a pocket full of 
Go ducats! <laughs> no, I, I suppose not, sir. <laughs> but, but, but seeing as how you're the king uh, and all that, I reckon you're, you're good for it. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> so the question of the hour remains. Where is the horse? Oh, I'll, I'll get him directly, sir. You mean it's not actually here? No, you don't think I'd be daft and lead a wander around a battlefield eating a bleeding horse, sire. No, Snowball is safe and sound back in his stables. <laughs> Did you just say Snowball? <laughs> <laughs> you love him, sire. He's handsome, pure white, uh, yeah, to match the white rose of York. That is just lovely. <laughs> but I need a horse. No! Don't get your chainmail in a tangle now. I'll fetch him for you. How long is that going to take? Well, I'll be back with Snowball before you know it. A half hour tops. Half an hour? I could be dead by then! Well, what about me, sir? I've got to go across the old bloody battlefield. I mean, you, you could sit here and hide under a rock or something. I'm not going to hide under a rock! I'm going to stand my ground like a king! Well, suit yourself, sir. But them Lancasters will be around you in a second once they see you standing there, what with your, uh... <laughs> <laughs> with my... What? Say it! That, 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 that thing. What? Oh, thing. What? Say it! No, no. <laughs> no, sir, that, that, Are you, by any chance, referring to my hump? Oh, well, now that you mention it, sir, <laughs> it is a prominent part of your personage when you say That's it! That's it! Keep your precious snowball, keep your stable, and every flea bit nag in it. In fact, keep, keep the hundred ducats. I'm going to go fight this battle on my own two feet with no help from you! Rich men! I'm coming for you! Shakespeare's briefest and most intense tragedy, and also, I might add, his scariest. I mean, those three witches are really quite terrifying, aren't they? Of course, the Jacobeans and the Elizabethans truly believed in witches. We still have our superstitions today, particularly in the theater. The theater people believe there is a curse on this particular play, and do not say its name for fear of bringing the curse on any given production. <laughs> They, they will only refer to it as the Scottish play. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> Shakespeare, Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. <laughs> See, pure poppycock. Uh, where was I? Oh, yes, uh, Macbeth, unlike Richard, was not a very happy homicidal monarch. In fact, he was quite a remorseful one. One believes that if it wasn't for Lady Macbeth's coaxing, he might not have the gumption to kill Duncan and seize the throne. Of course, once the killing begins, there is no end to it. Sirrah, a word with you. Attend those men our pleasure. Yes, my lord. They were about the palace gate. Bring them before us. <laughs> 